the St Patrick's College um, reserve side entering the ground here at Aurora Stadium for the reserves grand final on NTFA Division 2 grand final day. And the old Scotch side are uh, entering the Oval now in preparation for their grand final against St Patrick's College. You're already out on the ground. Rainy day here at Aurora Stadium for the uh, grand final. It's been raining since oh, around about 2 o'clock this morning and it uh, is forecast to continue to rain for the whole day. The umpire holds the ball aloft in the centre of the ground to get the grand final underway here at Aurora Stadium in the NTFA Division 2 reserves. And St Patrick's College will be the first team into a tackle, will they? Not quite. They've actually gone just a little forward of the centre circle, but Scott's taking the mark there and kicking the ball back up towards half forward. And St Pat's cut it off just near the big puddle of water. And there he goes with the right foot drop punt down the line, down centre wing, tapped out of uh, play there by uh, St Pat's and we'll wait for the boundary throw in. Danny O'Neill it was, putting that ball out of bounds, picked up there for Scotch by uh, their number 48, Gwyn Morgan. Scruffy old kick, wet conditions out there, you can see the water come up, advantage call and once again that uh, was McGuinn, uh, was it? Number 48, no Morgan. It was Gwyn Morgan getting that kick forward. And uh, for all the viewers, we apologise for the fact that we only see these players once a year, so it's going to take us a little time, in fact a long time, to probably pick up the numbers for you. And strong mark taken there, just backward of the centre wing by Scotch. No score on the board at this stage. And we've travelled a minute 20 in this first term. Now they switch the ball to the other side of the ground, the Thistles. Thistles coached by uh, John Hill. And the Saders coached by Ricky Goff. Two well-known names around football circles in northern Tasmania. And that's a good stop there by St Pat's right in the centre circle. The umpire will call for the ball up. Goes in and has to pick the ball up himself. Throws it high in the air. In these conditions, can't understand why he didn't bounce it. And struggling it out of that centre circle. Not much going on in there at close. Finally, St Pat's through the agency there of um, Gary McCarran. Put the ball forward to the 50 metre mark, but Scott strong in defence. Kick it way out toward the wing. You can see the rain coming down there in our pitcher. Sneaking it around the boundary line towards the 50 metre arc. Once again, conditions difficult for all players and the mark's been taken there. Not long enough, said the umpire, play it on. And Bennett kicks it down towards the centre circles. And Pats take the mark, play on again. Ball still in the centre square. Oh, brave decision to touch down, but he's going to get caught holding the ball. Advantage will be played, paid here and uh, taken quickly by Ricky Lang Langley. St Pat's inside the 50 metre arc. Scott's picking it up to run it out of defence there through Alex Robinson. He goes towards centre wing, or oh, infringement there over the shoulder. Yes, that's how the umpire seen it. And the free kick to be taken by the Thistles on centre wing. Another misdirected kick. The players are going to have great difficulty handing handling these conditions because we haven't had too many wet days in the footy season up here in the north we've had a lot of wet days but not too many of them have come on a Saturday ball knocked clear of the pack there you can see the water coming up off the ground ground's not chopping up which is one good thing unusual to see the water lay on Aurora Stadium in this current ground conditions that we have here nowadays and St Pat's trying to find a way into their forward line and there's been a whistle on play and it's going to be a free kick and it'll be taken there for St Patrick's by Sean Woods. So this will be our first shot on goal, I would think. He's gone back to line up the tall timber. Four minutes into this first quarter, still no score on the board. 
In he comes, the stuttering approach, the long kick to goal. It's going to land right in the square. Oh, almost to Mark Van and Pats. Will it be forced over the scoreline? Pack developing. The umpire will have to come in and throw it up right on the scoreline. What crowd is in attendance here at the moment? Hiding up underneath the covers of the big stands. And take two. I'm part of throw it up again. Close to the St. Pat score line. They take the ball. Can't get a kick away. Can the Thistles get it out of defence? Oh, I thought that might have been in the back. The water splashes up. And here's another chance for them. They struggle it forward. Can't pick it up cleanly. Players diving in on that wet surface. The umpire watching things closely and deciding we're going nowhere, boys. Give it to me. We'll take two. Well, it's a great day for the Ducks. They haven't arrived here yet, but they probably will before the day's out. And a whistle on play there. And the resultant free kick to Ricky Langley. He gets it on quickly. Oh, good mark. Well done. Good mark to... St. Pat Sean Woods there, and he'll have his second shot at goal, this time from much closer. He'll kick from about 40 metres. And not much wind here, but what wind there is seems to probably be assisting that in the city end of the ground. So he's got the wind behind him. In he comes, a high kick at goal, slightly off to the right-hand side. Play on the call, claimed the mark, did the St. Pat's man, but no, said the umpire. And we'll have a boundary throw. In. Boundary umpire sets himself to do his work. There's the throw in right into the uh, corridor in front of goal. Heavy tackle applied there. And the umpire doing the right thing, quickly calling for the ball before the packs develop too much. Sensible umpiring. Busy little player there for St. Pat so far in the game. Gary McCarran, he's not frightened to go in after the ball. Scott will get it out here and uh, transfer the ball forward where the mark's been taken by Batten. Turn over to St. Pat's. They've gone sideways and this time they've found Scott Bennett outside the 50 metre arc. You can just see that arc there behind the Scotch man on the mark. He's gone to the corridor, gone out in front of goal. No one can take the mark. They all dive on the footy. Where is it, they say, down there? And once again, Scott will take it out through Gwyn Morgan. Out to centre wing. Can Scotch get inside their attacking zone? He'll get a free kick for a push in the back. And that's uh, Winsenberg with the, uh, with the free kick. He goes across the ground. Oh, dear. Bad miss there for them by uh, Edwards. Will Edwards couldn't pick it up, goes back in after it. They've opened up the corridor here a bit for, for St. Pat's if they can get the ball, but the Thistles retain it, go out to the wing. We're trying to pick up that ball is Buswell. Finally does so. Gets it inside, play on, says the umpire. They've retained possession, and now they'll go forward towards the front of the centre square. St. Pat's man dropped what he should have taken. Going in after the ball... Pierce knocks it out and away he goes number 23 for some uh, for Scotch who I don't appear to have on my team sheet. How unusual! And the mark taken deep in defence for some Pats. They go out towards the scoreboard, clears the 50 metre mark, but Scotch will bring it straight in. Oh dear! Spilt the mark there. Ball loose in defence, picking it up to Bennett. Grabbing it from there is John Chester, and Chester's had a quick snap at goal, and I think he's put it through. Yes, he has. So that's the first score in the grand final, in the reserves grand final. Scotch on the board with one goal straight, leading St. Pat's at the eight-and-a-half-minute mark of this first quarter. St. Pat's have done most of the attacking, but are yet to score. Back in the centre of the ground, the umpire to do his work. Throws it high in the air. Ball to ground. Oh, good work by the St. Pat's man there. He tapped it out in the direction of his goal, but it was picked up by uh, 
Scotch is number 36, James Guest. And the whistle goes, it'll be a free kick out there to Scotch. Still inside the centre square, gets it outside towards the wing. Almost cut off there for St Pat's by uh, Paul Pierce. Ball running close to the boundary line. Caught with the footy and he'll be penalised, will he? Yes, he will. No, he won't. It's out of bounds and there'll be a boundary throw in. You can see the rain tumbling down here at Aurora Stadium. It's going to be like that for most of the day. Senior grand final coming up later on, of course, between Old Scotch and the Fingal Valley. So picking the ball up cleanly there, Alex Robinson moving nicely in the wet conditions. Off hands, goes towards the boundary line. Oh, here comes the tank through the pack without the footy. And the whistle's gone. Caught holding the ball and the Thistles get the free kick on centre wing. Kicking it right forward. It'll go inside 50 this time. The bouncing ball on this uh, wet Aurora Stadium surface. Some Pats man, was he pushed in the back? No, said the umpire. Picked up there for St. Pats by number 25, who I don't have on my team sheet as well. So we apologise for the numbers that we don't have. And in fact, I think it might have been Anthony House taking that kick and kicking it out towards centre wing. And another whistle on play, and it's going to be a free kick to the Thistles over there, held without the footy. Now, he decides to square it up with a wobbly old kick. Oh, luck's a fortune. He found a man, but he spilt the mark. Now it's kicked off the ground, leading to the race in the ball here of the Thistles. Oh, a bit of a, a niggle in the back there to Robinson. Play allowed to go on. Sensible umpiring. Picking it up there is Rigby. Rigby gets it inside 50. A two-out war here. Oh, here's a chance over the back for the St. Patrick's boys. He has a shot on goal. Makes no mistake. I think that was number 26 for St. Pat Sean Woods it was he's had a couple of attempts at goal and finally he's uh, got one through basically off the ground ball went over the back of the pack ran into an open goal it was a two man uh, war down there he won the war and St. Pat's level the scores one goal apiece six points and we've crossed the 11 and a half minute mark of this first term And I've just heard one of those funny things that we used to hear at the soccer. Um, what, are, what were they? Of a, a vavuzula, that's right, thank you. Now, what can the Thistles do in answer to this? And Pat's man caught high there as he went to the ground and he'll get up with the resultant free kick. Paul Pierce takes it towards centre wing and the Thistles get in the way and take the mark through Shipper. His kick finds a teammate there and the teammate is Michael Batten. Batten goes inside looking for a teammate over the back of the pack once again with this wet slippery ball and out of bounds adjacent to the behind post at the MMA Park end of the ground and we'll have a boundary throw in. Ruckman set themselves to do battle. Justin on the camera doing some Good camera work here for us in this first term of the grand final in the Division 2 reserves. This man's had a power of the footy in the first quarter for Scotch in uh, Gwyn Morgan. Drives it back inside the 50-metre arc. Well, some Pat's man tackled with a footy and dropped it, and he knows that he's in big trouble, and the Thistles get the resultant free kick. Quickly on with play, straight down towards the, the square, knocked over the line by the St. Patrick's defence. The first minor score in the game on a day like today. 1-1-7 to the Thistles. They lead St. Patrick's one straight goal, six. Now, where will I go? Says the fullback, and he brings it out here to the broadcast side of the ground. Two out tussle there. Ball goes to ground. Oh, a bit of a throw between the legs. <laughs> Pleading his innocence, but it was pretty obvious from us that Ricky Langley threw that ball between the legs of the resultant free kick going there uh, to one of the men that we haven't got a name for, number 23 for the Thistles. And the ball through for another minor score. Wack deciding which way he's going to go this time. 
Will he come to the broadcast side? No, he'll go more to the old railway side of the ground. Probably should call it the uh, university side of the ground or the museum side of the ground nowadays. In fact, that it might be very much easier, Terry, if you just call it the eastern side of the ground. Now, a bit of a debate here about what's going on. Finally, they've sorted it out. And it's going to be a St Pat's free kick. Right on that defensive 50 metre line. Keeps it pretty well in the centre square. Big punch forward. Swooping on the ball there is uh, number 38, Winsen Winsenberg. Inside 50 the ball goes. Can the Thistles pick it up? They share the ball around. Oh, didn't pick it up. In fact, it came off a boot and trickled out over the boundary line. And there'll be a boundary throw in just outside the 50 metre attacking zone for the Thistles. So the big men once again form up. So Pats win the knockdown. Thistles get the ball on the ground, swing it back in towards that 50 metre arc and a nice defensive mark taken there on the chest by Gary McCarran. So McCarran takes it right into the centre circle. My ball knocked away. Scotch first onto it. He's caught in the tackle. Umpire says you're holding the ball. Play won't go on. It'll come back. And the free kick will be taken by St Pat's adjacent to the centre circle. One, two, eight. Scotch leads and Pats one goal straight. Approaching the 16 minute mark of this first term and a nice overhead mark taken there by Dean Crooks. Crooks, a veteran of footy in the north and former Evandale coach, former North Launceston player. Oh, Scotch caught with the ball there. I don't think he's seen the man behind him. He was tackled with the footy and the resultant free kick is going to go to St Pat's number one, who once again I don't have a name for, I'm sorry but we can see in our picture there that he's about to line up on a 45 degree angle, maybe a little tighter than that, kicking towards the town end here at Aurora Stadium and the camera tells the story straight through for a major to St Pat's and they hit the front, two straight goals, 12, lead the Thistles, a one 2 8 16 and a half minutes gone, first term. Yeah, I don't know whether that's an omen for tonight or not. I've just seen a magpie fly to the top of the stand here at Aurora Stadium. Yes, I'm biased. I hope they fly tonight. Back to the centre circle. And away we go again. Ball comes to ground. Everyone goes to ground with it. And we'll have a restart right in that centre circle. Big men fly. Number 32 for Scotch. Taylor Hill doing battle there for the Thistles. And here they go forward again, the St Pat's boys. Oh, man on his own inside 50. And he's taken the mark. And he'll go back and line up to see if he can put their third straight major on the board directly in front of goal. And once again, some number changes here. And I don't think I can... Oh, yes, it's the captain of St. Pat's. In fact, Matt Gamble. Shoots on goal. The first miss for the Saints. Off to the right-hand side. Quickly brought back into play by Scotch. They go out towards the defensive 50, but the mark taken out there. For St. Pats, and they'll put it straight back in front of goal. In he comes. Oh. <laughs> Lux of fortune. Kick off the side of the boot, but it landed in the arms of uh, number 21 there, Nathan House, and he'll line up for a shot at goal. Pretty tight angle. The hardest pocket on Aurora Stadium to kick for goal from on that eastern side there at the city end. Although he's favoured by the wind coming across from that side and he's got plenty of elevation. 
The old umpire moves slightly to his left and a minor score is the result. First one, no, second one for St. Pat's. 2-2-14 leads, 1-2-8. St. Pat's in front by that one goal. Approaching the 19 and a half minute mark of this first turn. Scotch with plenty of work to do in defence. They get the ball out towards centre wing. The race is on. Who's going to be the fastest man? And the Scotch man was the fastest, but he actually overran the ball as he got there. Picked up there by Batten. Nicholas Batten, that was. And he struggles the ball forward where it's out over the boundary line and will have a boundary throw in. These two teams met in the second semi-final and Old Scotch came out handsome victors on that occasion, 13-13-91 to St Pat's 5-13-43 and at the moment St Pat's enjoy a one point, one point no sorry, a one goal lead on this very wet and slippery Aurora surface winding our way down to the end of the first turn, 20 minutes gone Boundary throw in, in the forward pocket. The Thistles in attack. They take the ball off the back of the pack. Can't break clear. Whistle blown. Holding the ball, says the umpire. And the free kick will go to the Saints in that last line of defence. Not too sure which way to go. He zigs and zags a little. Then he goes out to that eastern side of the ground. Mark taken there for uh, Scotch by Taylor Hill. Kicks it right into the square. Two out war there. Oh, kicked it off the ground. That's going to be a goal. Not too sure who it was. We'll find out in a minute by the pats on the back, I reckon. But it is a goal to the Thistles. And they now move on to 2-2-14 to share the lead with St Pats on that same score. 2-2 and 21 minutes gone. First term. I think the goal kicker might have been... Callum Woolley, the captain of the side. He's getting paid some close attention down there in the goal square at the moment. Ball back in the centre of the ground. Game restarts. Comes out here to centre wing where the mark's taken there by Luke Triffitt. He's quickly on with play. Oh, good mark. Just as the siren sounds to end the first term. And the first term is all Locked up dead level. 2 2 14 apiece between the Scotch and the St. Pat's boys in this grand final day, end of the first quarter here at Aurora Stadium. Just about in readiness to start the second term as the siren rings out to signify just that. Ball comes down the ground out of the ruck contest. We've got a dead even ball game after that first term and a ball up will result just outside the centre circle. Yes, last week, St Pat's won their way through to the grand final by defeating Uni Mowbray. St Pat's won 15-11, 101 to defeat Uni Mowbray, 13-5-83. And Uni Mowbray actually finished second on the ladder. St Pat's finished third with an 11-5 win-loss record and Old Scots, the Thistles going into attack here having a shot on goal off to the right-hand side and Old Scotch finished top of the ladder in uh, the reserves competition with a 15-1 win-loss record out of their 16 games Oh uh, kick and hope out of defence, but as it's turned out, it's worked out all right. It's gone over the back of the pack and St. Pat's. Oh, he had the air shot there, went to kick it off the ground and missed. Idea was right. Execution, a little wrong. And hard tackle there on the St. Pat's, on the Scotch player and St. Pat's. Quickly on with the play through the agency there of um, Danny O'Neill. Kicks the ball well inside their 50 metre attacking zone, and in the flash of an eye, the ball transferred from one end to the other. And now it's out of bounds at the end of May Park, end of the ground. Well inside the attacking zone for St Pat's. Boundary umpire well inside the boundary line there to throw the ball in. Ball to ground. Everyone diving on it. Not going to come out of there, I don't think, in a hurry. And the umpire agrees. And we'll have a ball up. 
Later on this afternoon, of course, we've got the senior grand final between Old Scotch, the undefeated Old Scotch, going for back-to-back premierships up against the Fingal Valley. And from that resultant ball up, the Thistles kick it off the ground. Here's a chance for them to pick it up and run. Well, he's turned back into a bit of trouble, but he's got the handball away there and it's picked up for uh, Scotch by, (coughs) pardon me, number 56 in shipper. He comes forward to the centre wing down here in front of our broadcast position. And before anyone can get to the ball, it's out over the boundary line and we'll have a boundary throw in. John Chester couldn't get to it there before it went out of play. Boundary throw in right down in front of us. So Pat Ruckman works his way to the front of the pack, gets the tap out, but going back in after it there, Borson Pats is uh, Chester. Whistle goes, and as you can see, Launceston's answered a great lake there. And there's going to be a 50 metre penalty enforced here. And it'll be taken right inside 50. For St. Pats, Nathan House, the recipient of that 50 metre penalty. Umpire Andrew Claxton on the mark. Fascinates me why umpires stand outside play. I know, well, I know why they stand outside play because that's what they're told to do. But don't tell me that's the best position for an umpire to be like that. Anyway. An old umpire speaks. And coming through the thistles in slow motion. And I was in slow motion there for a moment to match the pace of the play. Now, St. Pats have a chance to get it back in. Can they? Nowhere to go. Works his way around the outside of the pack. The long handball. Picked up and kicked inside 50 this time for St. Pats by uh, Brad Fox. And ball out of play once again, adjacent to that boundary, uh, to the uh, behind post at the Invermay Park end of the ground. Rain still coming down. You can see it there in Justin's camera and shot. Boundary umpire about to do her work. Throws the ball in. Comes down in front of goal. Quick step on goal. Missed to the slightly to the left hand side. So St Pat's. Go to the front by one behind. 2 3 15. Old Scotch 2 2 14. Four minutes gone in the second turn. And the race is on. Oh, courageous play by both combatants. Oh, not too sure what that was about. In the back says the umpire from some 40 metres away. And St. Pat's will take the free kick through the agency of the diminutive Gary McCarran. He puts it out in front of goal. St. Pats will pick it up. They'll get the handball away. Quick snap on goal there for St. Pats by Luke Triffitt. And he's made no mistake. He's put it through for a goal. And St. Pats, defying the odds here, have kicked away to a seven-point break. 3-3-21, leading Old Scotch 2-2-14. Restart back in the centre of the ground. Away we go. The two big men do battle. St. Pat's man didn't exactly have his eyes on the footy then when he went for that ruck contest. Allowed to get away with it. And Thistles could have had a free kick for a push in the back there, but the umpire wisely allows the play to go on. Inside 50 goes St. Pat's once again. Ball comes to ground. There's plenty of Thistles there. Can they do something with it? They pick it up, kick it out of that defensive area through Josh Bales. Out towards centre wing it goes. And a nice overhead mark taken in the conditions by the Thistles. They kick it back in. Trying to kick it off the ground there uh, for St. Pats was Scott Bennett. Close to the boundary line. Whistle on play once again. And umpire Claxton says the free kick to go to the Scotch player. Does he? No, he's just putting the man on the mark, I think. I'm pouring a long way away from the play once again. It is a big ground, I must admit. And working the ball in towards the side of the centre square. St. Pats go forward once again. Well inside 50. Here's a chance over the back of the pack. Can they do something with it? Picking it up and having a quick snap on goal. Well, I think he's put it through again, has he? He has. Goal umpire says oh, that's the score. A goal. And congratulations are plenty down there. I'm just trying to pick up who kicked the goal for you. I think it might have been... Number 26, was it? 
Yes, it was Sean Woods again. Now, I know he kicked the goal early in the first quarter, and that's his second, according to me. So, St. Pat's move away now to 4 3 27. Old Scotch 2 2 14. Seven minutes gone, second term. Sky looking a little lighter in some places, so I don't know whether that means that the rain has gone through. Not according to the Weather Bureau site that I looked at before I left home. It was supposed to be like rainy all day and some heavy rain coming later on in the day. Ball to the ground once again, very close to that front edge of the centre square there for St Pat's, as you can see. And the umpire calls for a ball up. Throws it high in the air. Gets back out of the way. Scotch knocked the ball to ground. Can they do something with it? They're being a little blocked up here by the St. Patrick's defence. Now can they do something with it? They're going the wrong way, but they've taken it backwards, as teams tend to do these days. Oh, a fresh air shot off the ground there by the St. Pat's man. Scotch pick it up through the agency there of um, Edwards. Ball caught array the crowd. St. Pat's going forward. No, drop the mark. Wow, taken a little high, I think. Goes to ground like the proverbial sack of potatoes. Got hit right up the front, the big man. But he's picking himself up ever so slowly. And he'll get up, turn around and have a look and see where the goals are. And try to make... The Thistles pay for that front-on attack. Matt Gamble, the captain of the St. Pat's Reserves, decides to play on, gives it off to a teammate on the run. There, I think that was Danny O'Neill. Long shot at goal, over the back of the pack. Scotch pick it up, round the boundary they come. Has a touch on the ground, he evades a player, kicks it well outside. 50, but the mark's been taken there for St. Pat's. And Cody Artis gets it back in towards the arc, but once again the Thistles get in the gap. Cut off there by number 49 for the Thistles, who I don't have on either the program or the team sheet. So you'll know who you are when you watch the videotape. And St. Pat's taking a nice sliding mark there through the agency of Danny O'Neill. Busy player O'Neill. Transfers it forward, looking for and finding big Jared Ponting. Ponting quickly on on the right foot. Right into the centre corridor he goes. St Pat's playing really well in these slippery conditions. 4-3-27 leads, 2-2-14. This was finished on top of the ladder, just losing one game for the home and away season. Won the second semi-final against St Pat's. And now find themselves with plenty of work to do. Shepherding in the ruck. Good call by the umpire. And the resultant free kick goes to Taylor Hill. Hill into the centre square. Playing on quickly. The Thistles going forward. Can they make something of this 4A forward? St Pat's first to the ball. And he'll get the free kick for a high tackle. To be taken there by Jason Rigby. Short kick by Rigby. In and finds that ever-busy Danny O'Neill straight onto the right foot, playing on quickly. He's got two men in the centre circle and finds one of them. That one being Anthony House. He takes it out towards centre wing. The race is on. Two-man tussle out there. One-on-one. -on -one. Don't see that often in modern-day footy. And now the Scotchies have got a loose man centre wing. He looks to get it inside 50. Oh, the defence standing firm there for St Pat's through the agency of Hodgetts and Robert Hodgetts takes the big mark in defence. Lumbers out over the 50 metre line and with a high drop punt sailing towards centre wing. Once again a one on one contest out there. The ball punts clear and to the ground and a boundary throw and will take place over there in front of the hospitality tent. Now I think we know what kind of hospitality tent it might be. Ruck contest comes to ground. Was that a bit high? No, said the umpire. He'll now decide it is. And no, he won't decide it is. I thought his arm indication indicated that he was going to pay a free kick. And a little bit worried about what's behind him, the field umpire, as he takes his eye off the play and 
carefully picks his way through the traffic. St. Pat's go forward, front position. Oh, clever work, sold the dummy there beautifully, Luke Trickett. Goal kicker in this quarter, gets the ball inside 50. St. Pat's handling the conditions much better than the Thistles at this stage. Quick snap on goal and he'll get a minor score. And that was uh, Sean Woods again. Busy player in the forward line, Sean Woods. Knows where the goals are. And so the Thistles through the agency there of uh, Gwyn Morgan. Look to get the ball out of their defence. And they've got it as far as that 50 metre arc there in front of the scoreboard. Scoreboard reading St Pat's, 4-4-28. Old Scotch, 2 2 14. 12 and a half minutes travelled in this second quarter. Still around that 50 metre arc and out over the boundary line again for another boundary throw in. Cloud lifting a little off the hills around Ravenswood on the eastern side of the ground there as we look from our commentary position. Ball still out in front of the big screen. Out on the full claims the St Pat's player and the umpire agrees, but in fact it's going the other way. It's going to Old Scotch. Off of St Pat's player it must have been in front of the hill and they work the ball down towards centre wing. Picked up there for St Pat's by Tyler Brooks. Works the ball by hand. Over the top they go inside the arc. Quick kick onto the boot there. And, oh, a bit of a push in the back, was it? No, the umpire allowed it to go on. He was right there. So now they come forward again, St Pat's. They're not to be denied. Scotch at hard, finding it hard to get away out of defence here in this reserves grand final. In TFA Division 2 grand final day in the reserves. Oh, a bit of a push and a shove. Picking it up there for the Thistles and worming his way out of trouble was number 23, who was one of those players that we don't have a name for. And right down here in front of our commentary position, the ball is out over the boundary line and we'll have a boundary throw in. And the umpire does her work, throws the ball in. Tapped out off the ground there for St. Pat's by big Jared Potty. Ball going nowhere in a hurry. It's a bit like the Tasmanian rail system this game. Nothing's going anywhere in a hurry. And finally, St. Pat's will take the free kick through the agency of Danny O'Neill. Played a good second quarter, Danny O'Neill, and with the big drop punt, he'll land it right at inside the 50. Now, have they got the numbers to get this ball out of there? Scotch, keep their call. Cool. They've got the numbers to get the ball out. Oh, he lost the footy and then had a big punch at it. The umpire said, that's OK. Scotch man manhandled a little. Now they've got some numbers here in the centre circle. Pick it up quickly and kick it. They do just that. Down towards the attacking side of the centre square. Proud call ball. Play on the call from the umpire. Lands in the hands there of Robin Hodgetts. He can't get the ball around the corner. Becoming a real scramble. St. Pat's are the first to it. Now they've got a man free. Oh, he was off with it before he got it. The big fella there in number 44 in Quigley. Now, can the Scotchies make something of this? He goes down to the ball strongly. Is he sat on from the back? No. Umpire Claxton says, give it to me. And we'll have a ball up. Ground showing some signs down there at the front of the goal square, as you can see in our picture, of uh, getting... A little muddy, unusual for this oval. Now, picked up there, oh, handball went astray from St Pat's as you saw in the picture. That handball coming from Nathan House missed the target and we'll have a boundary throw in. So it's just outside the defensive 50 for St Pat's. They lead by 14 points, 28 playing 14 it is. And we've crossed the 16 minute mark of the quarter Throw there, says umpire Claxton, and the ball is going to come back and the free kick will be taken for St. Pat's by Paul Pierce. So Pierce trying to direct the traffic. He'll come on the right foot with a nice drop punt around here towards centre wing. St. Pat's man gave his opponent a bit of a nudge out of the contest and it's picked up there on the ground by Cody Artis. He struggles the ball forward, ball close to the boundary line, and in fact it's out over the boundary line and there'll be a boundary throw in. Almost 17 minutes gone. 
Second quarter. St. Pat's enjoying a 14 point break, 4 4 28 to 2 2 14. So, whichever way you look at that, the St. Pat's boys have doubled Scotch's score at the moment. Scotch in defence, trying to get the ball out, and something happened there behind play, I think, and picking himself slowly up off the ground is number 48, Gwyn Morgan, it was, and he took the result and free kick. So now the Thistles with plenty of work to do to get back into this game on the scoreboard at least. They've had plenty of the play, but they're just handling the ball a little less cleanly than St. Pat's, and Pat's are very desperate. Ball down there underneath that pack of players somewhere, and umpire having a look-see, he said, no, you tried to break the tackle, and he's awarded the free kick. They'll get a 50-metre penalty if they don't hurry up and give the ball back. They finally do through the agency of Dean Crooks and the free kick will be taken there by Michael Batten. Batten kicked uh, four goals, I think, in that second semi-final clash between Old Scotch and St Pat's. And now the ball, can they get it out of defence? House, he's been a very busy player. Probably St Pat's best in actual fact, along with uh, number 26, Sean Woods, in the forward line. So now Scotch on the centre wing on the old... Uh, Railway side of the ground, get the ball forward, but standing strongly in the way there to take the defensive mark, Gary McCarran reading the game superbly, gets it out the centre wing where Luke Triffitt, who's also been very busy in this second quarter, horse and pats, now the numbers are with Scotch as they square the ball up and bring it out here in the direction of Batten. He's taking his time to get square onto the ball, but he finally does so, picks it up, or is it mightn't be Batten in actual fact, I don't think it is, but it was Lonigan. And... Tom Lonigan was the man with the footy. Kicked it forward. Now it's gone back into the hands of St. Pat's. And Mark will be taken there for them by Fenton. Fenton looking for the lead coming from his forwards. It was a lead from Woods, but he couldn't get to the ball before it went out over the boundary line for the boundary throw in. Pointing the ball over near the fence. And he'll do his work. The Ruckman congregate. Big swipe over the back of the pack by Gamble, the captain. Out in front of the St Pat's goal. Here's a chance for them if he can pick it up. He can. Oh, strong attack on the footy by the Thistles. Good work. Scrambled out of the pack there once again as they get it out towards their defensive 50. Still with the ball, the Scotch boys. So a bad fumble there. Now the ball is being knocked out off the ground again, going nowhere in a hurry. Nice clean pick up that time by Tom Lonigan. And Lonigan will go towards that arc on that eastern side of the ground once again, taking it out over the defensive 50. Old Scotch looking for a way forward here. He's found his man. And that's the man that we were talking about before, Michael Batten. He uh, leads to the ball and takes a nice mark. Not frightened to use the corridor either of these teams. They keep bringing it back into that centre corridor. Now the ball's knocked uh, forward, looking for a Scotch teammate. Two on one there as uh, Nathan House doing battle. Comes out, St. Pat's with the ball, knocked away on the tackle. Ball to ground, <laughs> swats it out of the pack. They dive on the footy. House in there again for St. Pat's. And the umpire says, give it to me, boys. We're going nowhere quickly here, and we'll have a ball up. 20 and a half minutes gone, second quarter. The Thistle Ruckman rose higher than the price of petrol, knocked the ball out of the pack. St. Pat's going forward right on the 50 metre arc, almost juggled the mark and held onto it. Now the Thistles come out of defence and picking it up cleanly. But going nowhere, the siren stopped the forward motion there as Tom Lonigan. Featured in the last few minutes of play, quite often Tom Lonigan picked the ball up, the siren beating him, and at half-time, as the teams will leave the ground for their half-time break, the scoreboard reads, St Pat's, 4-4-28, leading Old Scotch, 2-2-14, in the NTFA Division 2 Reserve Grade Grand Final of 2010. Things just about in readiness to bring you the final half of the season for the reserves in the NTFA Division 2. 
Last game of the year, grand final day. And at half time, we've got St. Pat's leading by 14 points. 4 4 28, Old Scotch 2 2 14. Teams doing their final warm ups before the commencement of this third term. St. Pat's have been just a little too organised for the Thistles at the moment. The Thistles not combining well, struggling to get the ball into their forward zone. St. Pat's a little quick for them in the conditions. They've handled the wet conditions a little better. And as we say, currently enjoy that 14 point lead. Umpires showing a lack of interest in getting the game underway. We're standing out there for quite some time before the teams return to the ground and uh, hardly taking control of the situation at the moment. In fact, we're seeing some umpiring skills there in the centre. Justin bringing you the pitches. Terry Fellows in the commentary position and finally the teams break up and things look like happening to get this second term underway. A wet and miserable grand final day here at Aurora Stadium. Next week of course the Division 1 grand finals on this very same ground. The under 19s, the reserves and the seniors take place. And later on this afternoon, Old Scots will play the Fingal Valley in the senior grand final of the NTFA Division 2 competition. So third quarter underway. Ball going nowhere quick and the umpire will call for a restart. Quickly in and throws the ball high in the air. Scotch knocked the ball to the ground. Comes out Warehouse, who's been a prolific kick winner for St. Pat's. Gets the ball down towards the attacking side of the centre square. Scotch drive the ball back out of there with a wobbly old kick. Picked up there for them by number 49, who is one of the players that I don't have a number for, I don't think. No, I don't. And ball right down into their attacking zone. So can they get the first score on the board in this third term? Holding the ball, says the umpire, and the free kick will go to the St. Pat's defence. They bring it out and find a loose player out here in the form of Jason Rigby. Still inside their uh, defensive 50. Bring it out over now towards the centre wing to the main puddle and out over the boundary line off hands and there'll be a boundary throw in. So the boys are going to be a bit dirty, a bit wet and a bit sore and sorry after this one. Probably the worst conditions that they've played in for the 2010 season. And lucky, in fact, that it's on this big Aurora stadium surface, which stands up to this kind of weather pretty well. Free kick there taken for Scotch by number 49, driving the ball forward. And I don't know whether some of the boys have changed their jumper or not half time but I don't have a number 49 for Scotch neither so you'll have to accept our apologies because we only see these players once in a 12 month period and don't know them if we don't have their numbers and their names so kicked in there for Scotch by Richard Palmer ball comes to ground through the legs of the St. Pat's player there. Now he's looking to get the ball out of the pack card. He's held a little high there, but the umpire allows the play to go on. Picked up by Batten and a quick snap at goal. Goal umpire going to his left-hand side. Minor score. And the first score on the board in this third term goes to Scotch. They move to 2-3-15, trailing St. Pat's 4-4-28. Back in play from that point. Oh, held without the footy, was he? No, he wasn't. Umpire once again allows play to go on. It's knocked out of the pack. Now there's a whistle and the free kick will go to Scotch. And they'll... Oh, it's actually gone... Umpire signaled the other way, I thought. But anyway, it's gone to St. Pat's. And they've quickly relayed the ball up towards their attacking 50. Rolls inside 50. Trying to get the ball there for them is their captain, Matt Gamble. Oh, big tackle on the uh, Scotch player there. He uh, eludes the tackle. Finally, his teammates caught with a footy. And 
Dropped the ball cold, said the umpire, and some Pats get the result and free kick. Try to bring it out in front of goal. Ball comes to ground. You can see the ball sploshing through the water there. Very wet down that end of the ground. House went to, for the ball, couldn't grab it. Play allowed to go on. Now there's going to be a whistle on play and the free kick. will go to St Pats and it's going to go to their number seven, Big Scott Bennett. And Bennett will get the resultant free kick about 40 metres out of goal. He'll take the kick from outside 50. Sees a man clear inside and finds him, hits him on the chest. Good unselfish play and Dean Crooks will go back and line up for goal. The floor world man, Dean Crooks, number 10 on his back. We've got the perfect angle on this one as he shoots towards the city end goal. There's the kick high in the air. And I think he's put it through. He has. The goal umpire, well, that's a novel way of signaling a goal. First one hand, then the other to bring up the two fingers. And a goal on the board to Dean Crooks for St Pat's. So they move away now to 5-4-34, leading the Thistles 2-3-15. Handsome break in these conditions. A good lead, in fact. 19-point lead at this almost five-minute mark of the third quarter. Ball back in the centre, tossed up by the umpire, comes to ground. And whistle on play. And we'll do it all again, boys. Once again, Anthony House, the last one up from underneath the pack. He's been a dynamo for the St. Pat's boys in this game. Oh, takes a dive through the pack. Better swallow dive there than any swallow could do. Oh, had tackle around the neck, I thought, but play goes on. And here comes Scotts through the agency of Alex Robinson, defending stoutly. Gets the ball out towards centre wing. Finds his teammate out there, who's not too sure whether to go on with it or not, Rafe Ball. Now he does. Goes further wide. Not the way to go on this big ground, boys. Get it up and down that corridor, the shortest way to go. And taking the defensive mark there. For St. Pat's is Ricky Langley, the vice captain. Now a little undecided as the rain tumbles down in September. Out of bounds on the full. And the resultant free kick to be taken for Scotch. Seems to have changed direction a bit, the rain in actual fact. It was uh, slanting right to left in the first quarter and now it's slanting quite back the other way so a bit of a change in the direction of the rain which is probably the only interesting thing that we've got to talk about at the moment as these two teams do struggle in these wet conditions now two on one here and Scotch pick it up, oh drop the ball at the critical moment then has a quick kick off the ground through for a minor score and that was Tim Shipper for the Thistles. So Scotch move on to 2 4, 16. Trailing St. Pat's, 5 4, 34. And we're working out a way towards the seven minute mark of quarter number three. Good kick out of defence in these conditions, and the mark's been taken there by Danny O'Neill. Very busy in that second quarter, or particularly in the first half of the second quarter. Danny O'Neill picked up there once again by Alex Robinson. He's playing a good third quarter for his side. Gets the ball in towards the 50 metre line. Held without the footy. And no, he's dropped the ball. And St. Pat's will take the free kick through the agency of Brad Fox. Fox decides to come down the side of the centre square. Ball to ground after that contest. Swooping on it and cleaning up there quickly for Scotch was Gwyn Morgan. He's been a reliable and consistent player all day. Mark taken and sneaked around the corner there by Tim Shipper. And there's been a free kick, high tackle, and the free kick's going to go to one of those men that we don't have a name for. We've got his number, it's number 49, and he's going to line up and take the shot on goal. Yes, he's stretched the hammies. Giving the ball a bit of a twiddle. Oh, he's gone right, gone left. And he's gone where he actually run with the kick. To the right hand side of the goal face and now St Pat's have the chance to clear it out of defence which is what they do but the mark's going to be taken out there for the Thistles by number 37 Tim McNeil and 
the defensive work of St Pat's once again holds up. They kick the ball towards Danny O'Neill. And he'll bring it on with a nice kick out here. We've gone through Morgan's fingertips. One of the few mistakes he's made during the course of the day. A high tackle there, I thought, yes. And that's how umpire Claxton's seen it. And the free kick will go to Ra <coughs> Rafe Bell. Plenty of tape on Rafe Bell. Got the shoulders heavily taped. Squares it up, goes backwards, in fact. And all he's done is found the captain for some pats in Matt Gamble. He kindly accepts the mark and then kicks it inside 50. Oh, here's a chance for the St. Patrick's boys. Can they pick it up? No, they can't. And it's jarred clear and picked up by Robinson gets another possession in this third quarter. He finds a teammate clear at the back of the centre square. Can they link up and get rid of this footy and do something with it? Ends up in the hands there of Palmer. Palmer looks to get the ball forward to the front edge of the centre square. St. Pat's in front, dropped what they probably should have taken there, even though the conditions and the ball is very wet and slippery. And now there's a lock-up on the footy. The umpire quickly calls for it and we'll have the ball up. Midway between the front edge of the centre square and the 50-metre arc. Scotch going into attack. Here's a chance for him to go forward once again. Quick hands, gives it off there in the direction of uh, a teammate. And the free kick will end up in the hands of St. Patrick's College, Danny O'Neill again. Down in the direction of his captain, who couldn't get to the footy, and off hands. Out over the boundary line, right down here in front of us on centre wing, broadcast side of the ground. Now there's a man in a hat down here that's uh, gone into slumberland. And... Whistle on play. Held without footy. Grabbed his arms and umpire Claxton. And the free kick will go to St Pat's. He'll transfer the ball very close to the boundary line. Now, is that out in the full? Yes, says the boundary umpire. Great camera work there. Picked it up beautifully. Seen the boundary umpire right on the spot. Blowing the ball out of bounds. And the resultant free kick goes to Morgan. Morgan struggles the ball forward. St Pat's holding up strong here on centre wing. Picked up, in fact, there by Rigby. Quick hands, gets it off. And a nice tumbling mark to Rafe Bell, who's coming to the game a little bit in this third quarter. And so is this bloke, Alex Robinson. He's had a power of kicks in his third term. Gets another one. Right into the centre square goes the slippy, slidey footy. Getting down to it quickly, St. Pat's. Picking it up there nice and cleanly in the conditions is Brad Fox. He runs with the footy. Ball down to ground. He's still in there doing battle. Who can win it out of there? Good smother off the boot. Oh, the boys are having trouble with this piece of uh, soap. And they've kicked it forward now. Scotch into the middle of the corridor. And here's a chance. They run onto the loose footy. Quick shot on goal. That, I think, was Tim Shipper. And he's put a goal on the board for Scotch. A much-needed goal on the board for Scotch. And moves them now within two straight kicks of St. Pat's. Scotch, 3-4-22. Trails and Pats, 5-4-34. 11 and three-quarter minutes gone. Third turn. Now, yeah, there's the thing. The water boy doing his duty, giving them a drink. They'd only have to stand with their head tilted back and they'd get plenty of water because it's coming down again in bucketfuls here at Aurora Stadium. I keep going to say York Park because that's what I was brought up with. But we must call it Aurora Stadium nowadays. Ball close to that centre circle following the throw up. 22 point lead. No, it's not a 22 point lead, it's a 12 point lead. Someone's good on his maths here. 22 versus 34. 12 point lead, two gold lead to St Pat's who have led for most of the day. Scotch starting to get a little busier now in this third term. They soccer the ball off the ground. Brings it back where having a little trouble picking it up there was O'Neill. He's going to get a second opportunity to get the handball here, will he? Uh, House struggles the ball forward, smothered off the boot, out over the boundary line down here in front of us once again before Jason Rigby could get to it. And the boundary, guard, boundary umpire will throw the ball in. A lady boundary umpire. And it's well inside the field of play. And throws the ball in. A hop, skip and a jump. And over the head it goes. 
O'Neill couldn't pick up the loose ball that time. Here's a chance for the Thistles. No, he fumbled it at the, fumbled it at the crucial stage. And I can tell you that the weather has shifted a little because the breeze is starting to come in the front of our commentary box here now. And free kick here to St. Pats to be taken by Cody Artis. No, it's not Cody Artis. It's been relayed, in fact, to someone else. And now they struggle the ball off one step right to the arc, kicked off the ground by Bell. And can his teammate pick it up? There's a whistle on play here. And it's going to be a St. Patrick's free kick out there on centre wing. They come back down the ground. And there's the recipient of the free kick. You can hear the rain on the tin roof above us here. And finally, after 14 grabs, the mark is paid to number 23 for Scotch. So don't blame us, boys, if we can't call your name. We can't call your name if we haven't got a corresponding name to a number. So we're doing what we can do for you. So out there on the centre wing, Scotch with the ball. A lot of work to do to get back up. Even though it's only a two-goal break, it's a big break in these conditions as the rain continues to fall heavily, as we did tell you that it was supposed to do. And, oh, here's a chance for them, however. A nice strong mark taken in front of the pack there for Scotch. And he's going to go back, Tim Shipper. He kicked the goal earlier in this quarter, Shipper, and now he's lighting up for his second chance to add to his personal tally and add to his team tally. And will this be the kick that brings them back within one goal of the Saders? And it is straight through the high did a little. And Old Scotch get that one goal closer now. And in fact, there is just a one goal the difference. Old Scotch, 4-4-28. St. Patrick's, a 5-4-34. So have the Saders run their race. Can Old Scotch get over them? We will tell you as the story unfolds in this reserve grade grand final of Division 2 on NTFA Division 2 grand final day here at Aurora Stadium. Umpire in the centre of the ground, throws the ball high in the air. Ball to ground. Bundled out of the way there was the Scotch player, but they retain possession and go forward here through the agency of Wisenberg. And the mark will be paid there to the St. Pat's defender getting up off the ground, Ian Quigley, and he'll try and relieve the pressure on the St. Patrick's defence. Brings the ball to centre wing. Tap forward of the pack. Quickly picking it up there and running with the ball is Hamish Dowling. Right down a full forward. Two on two battle down here. St. Pat's now have worked themselves clear for the numbers and it's going to go out off hands over the boundary line for a boundary throw in. Half forward flank. Invermay Park end of the ground. The end of the ground to which Old Scotch are attacking. 4-4-28. St. Pat's 5-4-34. Approaching the 17-minute mark of the third quarter. The pack develops going nowhere in a hurry. And a bit like my bank balance, really. And the umpire comes in and calls for the ball up. Comes to ground. Oh, timely tackle there by the St. Patrick's defence. Took the ball away from the Scotch attacker. Now it comes out here towards centre wing. Can they do something with it? Yes, they've got it all kicked into the man coming towards him, but they're lucky they still keep the footy. And here goes Morgan with the ball, this time driving it inside 50. Oh, strong mark. Great mark, in fact, by this man again. He's figuring very prominently shipper. And he'll... He's going to line up for his third goal in this third quarter. And he alone has brought his team right back into this contest. Straight kick here and he'll level the scores. He's got it right down to the face of goal. Punch through in defence there by St. Pats. Minor score. So five-point ball game here at Aurora Stadium. 34 St. Pats, 29 to Old Scotch. And we're rapidly approaching the 19-minute mark of the turn. Kicked in there from the 
St. Patrick's defence. Out over the boundary line. It was touched in transit, so it'll be a boundary throw-in. Now the rain seems to have straightened up, as you can see on your picture there. It's a now vertical rain, in case you're interested. And the old Scotchman being ridden like the bull at the Rodeo, but he was clever enough to keep the ball and ends up in the hands of St. Pat's there through the agency of Nathan House. And he finds his teammate in O'Neill. Right out there on that far and distant side of Aurora Stadium. A long kick down that eastern side of the ground. Comes back towards centre wing. Direct centre wing in actual fact. Struggling the ball out of the pack there. And getting it forward. Picking it up cleanly in the conditions. Tyler Brooks. And he finds a teammate over there in front of the big open stands that are not exactly full of people. Morgan again does the mopping up for his side. And he's going to get a free kick down the ground there. He was put into the ground after he disposed of the footy. And it'll be a down the ground free kick to Scotch. Oh, Van on hands and knees, crawling after the ball a la baby style. And shoveled out of the pack there by a Scotch player. Lands in the hands of St. Pats. They go back down the ground. Oh, that's a great mark in the conditions by Luke Triffitt. And no, he's not going to get the mark. Umpire Claxton. No, it wasn't umpire Claxton, but it, he didn't agree with my call of it. It wasn't a great mark. He said that you held on to your opponent. And Scott's got the kick. And now they've picked up another one here through the agency of Anthony Williams, sliding along the turf and taking the mark. And now on the backward side of the centre square. St. Pat's take the mark. Morgan with the big fist to the ball, down in the direction of Williams. Can he do something with it before it goes out over the boundary line? No, he can't. And we'll have a boundary throw in. Over there in front of the hospitality area. Nothing very hospital hospitable about this day, believe me. It's a dirty day here at Aurora Stadium. Getting the quick kick forward. And out over the boundary line for another throw in. Just outside the 50 metre line. St. Pats haven't been too many times into attack this quarter. They have actually scored a goal in the quarter at half time. They were 4 4, leading Old Scotch 2 2. And currently it's 5 4 playing 4-5, so it's been Scotch's quarter, they trail by five points, that is and there's the siren to bring them in the term, 21 and a half minutes the third quarter went for and at three quarter time, Scotch have worked their way back into this game, and it's going to be a great final term at three quarter time, St Pat's 5-4, and lead old Scotch, 4-5, 29 About to roll in the last quarter of season 2010 for these two teams. Who will be the Premiers for 2010? St. Pat's currently hold that five point lead. 5 4, 34. Leading Old Scotch, who had a very productive third quarter, 4 5, 29. So a five point break to the Saners. Can they hold on? Can the Thistles get over the top of them? The top team for the season on the home and away part of the season at least, the Scotchies, and they're doing battle here with their arch rivals, St Pat's. Oh, high tackle there, yes, that's how the umpire seen it. And there'll be a free kick to Scotch to get the ball into their attacking zone. No, there's a whistle on play. Come around behind your mark, says umpire Claxton. And that's just what the man does. Thomas Floyd, I think it is. And he's kicked the ball down. Oh, hello, Mark taken over the pack here for the Scotch boys, and they've got a chance to hit the front. And the man 
there on screen with the ball in his hands is none other than Todd Dakey. So, he's going to line up for this shot at goal. Not much better than a 15 degree angle, I wouldn't think, and he's no more than about 25 metres out of, or the man on the mark, no more than about 25 metres out of goal. And an accurate kick here, we'll see the Thistles hit the front. In he comes. It's a high and handsome kick. Goal umpire does a little to his right-hand side, but it's good enough for a goal, and the Thistles have hit the front. So after training for most of the day, finally, Scotch get a one-point lead in this game. St. Pat's, 5-4-34, now trail old Scotch, 5-5-35, and we're just a minute and a half into this final turn. It's wet, it's miserable, it's heavy going out there for both sides. And O'Neill, first one onto that ball from the throw up, gets the ball forward for his team and St. Pats. Can they make something of this? Trying to get the ball forward. House goes down to ground, trying to get it out of that pack. He's been a good player, a little quieter in that third quarter. This, been, this bloke's been good for four quarters. Number 48 in uh, Gwyn Morgan for the Thistles. Oh, a bit of a fumble there, but he's good enough to pick it up. Is, um, is in fact... Not too sure who that was. That's the man that we didn't have the, uh, the name for. Number 23. Down towards the attacking zone he goes. He's back in the play there. Gets the quick hands out. Here's a chance for them. Can they pick it up? Yes, they can. Wayward handball. Made it very difficult there for his teammate. Did the Scotch man. He finally gets the ball out of the pack. The race is on. Goes to ground there. Did Batten. Now can the Sainers get this ball out of defence, here's a chance for them, they've brought it to centre wing, man with a bit of a break on his opponent there is Crooks gets through the traffic, finally has to get the handball away quickly, out over the boundary line down here in front of us and the boundary throw in to take place directly on centre wing oh, done, his, uh, done an ankle there I think, Richard Palmer for Scotch, he's being escorted off through the interchange area and immediately goes to ground not feeling too good, and he's been replaced. Picking the ball up from that ruck contest and kicking it forward there was Lonigan. Found the waiting arms of the St. Patrick's defence, and he'll come wide looking for his teammate and finding Lee Jordan. Whistle, and free kick. Going to Will Edwards there for Scotch. Now, St. Pats have a chance to come or try and come forward again. Mark dropped there by Bell. Ball to ground. Pack developing. Umpire watching carefully and decides to stop going anywhere. Boys, we better have a ball up. And that's exactly what he'll have to do. So the ground staff at Aurora Stadium will have a bit of work to do after this weekend's games to prepare the ground for the Division 1 Grand Finals next week. Oh, a bit of a nudge out of the pack there from Matt Gamble, the, uh, the coach of St. Pat's. And now, oh, he's been caught for holding the footy. Last night, that was a push in the back. Ask Cameron Moody. And um, cost you long the game, in actual fact. That same call last night. And out over the boundary line again, again down here in front of us. And the boundary throw in to take place. So it's Old Scotch by a point. 34 St. Pat's, 35, Old Scotch. Four and a half minutes in this final term of footy for these two sides for 2010. One of them will walk away with the Premiership. House, tackle front on, allowed to go on. Gets the ball out here. Oh, big tackle there on the St. Patrick's College man. In uh, Ricky Langley, dropped the ball, said the umpire and the free kick. Goes to St. Pat's Nick Batten. Play on, he's that elusive number 23, the nameless man, gets it over to Lonigan. Lonigan kicks it inside 50. Ball to ground once again. They're slipping and sliding all over the place now as the ground continues to get more and more waterlogged. Scotch with the numbers. Trickle it forward. Oh, overrun there badly by Jason Rigby. And here he is again, number 23. He's got the scent of it. He couldn't pick it up. A bit like my dog. And now, St. Pat's with the ball, close to the boundary line. 
You can see in our picture there how close to the boundary line the ball is. And the tackling's coming thick and fast. St. Pat's with the ball. And finally, out over the boundary line, says the boundary umpire. And there's going to be a free kick pay there. And there's a bit of a stoush on. Down on the ground, there's St. Pat's player there, Luke Trifford. And there's a bit of a push and shove. The free kick's been awarded to Trifford, I think, but he won't be taking it. The teammate will have to take it because he's down there kissing Mother Earth. Not the best day to be doing that. He's on his feet now, but the free kick will, will be taken by his teammate in O'Neill. He's up and about Trifford, so that's a good sign. O'Neill kicks the ball forward. All nice hands in the back there, picked up by the umpire. And Ricky Langley trying to get rid of his opponent. And the free kick will go to Scotch as the rain gets a little heavier here at Aurora Stadium. You can see the ball skidding off this wet surface. They struggle the ball forward again to Old Scotch through for a minor score. And the goal umpire said, what a lovely day it is. There's two footies out there now. And back goes the fullback for some pats in Cody Artis to pick the ball up and bring it back into play. So a two-point break to Scotch. 36 plays 34. Seven and a half minutes gone. And the rain is falling quite heavily. This is going to go out of play without being touched, this ball. It is, and that will result in a free kick to Scotch to be taken there for them by... Ned Winsenberg gets it into the corridor quickly. I hope the tide doesn't come in because if it gets any higher out there that water level, we'll all have to swim for it. And now the umpire says, give it to me, boys. We'll throw it up and see if we can get it out of here. And he does just that. Gets the ball down to ground again, so we'll have to do it all over again. And he does. Knocking the ball forward there for some bats. Uh, for the Scotch was Winsenberg. Ball down in that big puddle once again. House down there on hands and knees. Gets the ball out to a teammate in O'Neill. O'Neill's kick comes outside the defensive 50. Oh, that was a good tackle. Play on, says the umpire. The ball came free. And now he's paid a free kick to St. Pats. And the free kick. No one on the mark, so he can run here if he wants to, and that's what he's just decided to do. Hugs the boundary line, coming in and taking a nice defensive chest mark there for his team. It was a man that I also have no number for. So we've got a number 43, or is it 23, and a number 49. But I have no idea who they are, but you will as you watch the tape of this. Lonigan gets it out, goes wider still. Now that the short man's on, No, it's play on, says the umpire. No, he's actually paid the mark. A bit of a debate here about which umpire's actually in control, I think. But he's finally decided. And he's going to ball it up. And there you go. Brain on the brain. So Scotch picked that ball up from the resultant ball up and it's quick, kicked quickly down towards the face of goal. Sliding in there trying to get control of the ball was Paul Pierce. And it's out over the boundary line and we'll have another throw in. 9.45 gone. Boundary umpire struggling to get any depth in that throw in. House quickly boot the ball. Outside 50. Close to the boundary line over there and there's a very good shot of that rain belting down here at Aurora Stadium and held without the footy the St. Pat's man will take the free kick coming straight down the rain, no wind which is no good sign for all the weather experts because the rain is obviously here to sit for a while, no wind to blow it out of the way, move the clouds on and Doing a bit of a blind turn out there and getting away with the footy was Buzzwell. It might have been Lonigan, anyway. 
Ball out towards centre wings and Pat's trying to get the ball forward to get another score on the board to regain the lead in this game. 34 St. Pat's, 36 old Scotch and the boundary throw in. The hospitality tent, not very full of hospitables. Four people over there that you can see in the back of your picture enjoying a cold one and it would be cold today ball to ground clever play by the old scotch player kicked it off the ground this is going to go horribly close trickles through from behind in the finish as the water splashes up here as the players scoot across here to the broadcast side of the ground from the kick in and that is what happened last time it went out of bounds without being touched and the resultant free kick from that kick in will go to Winsenberg for Scotch. Ooh, bundled out of the way there in the marking contest. That's okay, says the umpire. Ball very close to the boundary line. Kept in play. House allowing his teammate there in Pierce to go to the ball first. Kicked over here where the ball once again is very close to the ground. Oh, Lodigan hit hard after he disposed of the ball by the captain of St. Pat's. And Gamble and Gamble now down on the back line trying to lift his charges and get some activity into them. And the free kick goes to that man number 23 and I think he's put it out of bounds on the full. No, he hasn't. The boundary umpire said it was touched right on the line. So we'll have another boundary throw in. 12 and a half minutes gone. Old Scotch lead by three points. 37 playing 34. Throw in close to the old Scotch goal. Oh, here's a chance. Can he get the ball? No, he can't. Tackled just at the moment that he was about to bring the ball down to boot and forced through for another behind. So St. Pats have got to go up the middle here and do something with this footy. Gamble gets rid of his man. Ball to ground. A lot of the Scotch players swooping around this ball. Lonigan gets boot to ball, kicks it in off the hands of the pack. In goes Gamble once again, trying valiantly to lift his side. Comes into the hands of Rigby. Can Rigby get free with it? He can. Comes out there to Nathan House. He gets the ball forward, but once again, no one up there to do the work for St. Pat's, and the defending mark's been taken there by Taylor Hill. He goes into the centre of the ground. The tackling is fast and furious. Drop the ball, said the umpire on the free kick. Will go in the direction of House for St. Pat's. He's probably been their team's best player, House. Kicks it down this time in the direction of his captain. He couldn't get to the ball. There's his captain there. In fact, went to kick it off the ground. Gamble didn't get boot to ball. Big pack developing and another ball up and take place just towards the attacking side of the centre square for St. Pat's. They need to get this ball forward from here. Four points they trail by. The big men fly. Comes to ground. They push, they shove, they huff, they puff. And finally, Scotch come out with a footy. Work it towards centre wing. Here they go. Get the ball down into attack. But standing in the way there to take a nice solid mark in defence is Brad, Brad Fox for St. Pat's. On the left foot, a drop punt. Working it forward. Punched out of the pack. Here's a go. Can he pick it up cleanly? He picked it up. Then he taps it back to House, waiting at the back of the pack for the ball. He's quick to get boot to ball. Old Scotch, take the mark, drive it through that centre corridor. Here's a go down here. Can he pick the ball? Over the top goes the handball, running into an open goal. Bain he goes, and that may be the sealer for the Scotch boys. Put it straight through the middle. Great goal of the old Scotch team. They've played much better footy since half time. 6 8 44, lead 5 4 34. They're now out to a handsome little break in these conditions. And the hard work now has to come from St. Pat's from this ball up in the centre of the ground. They need to go forward and they need to go forward quickly. Ball thrown up. The Ruckman fly, ball comes to ground. No one with clear possession. Once again, the ball falls to ground. Now there's a chance for House. He goes in after that footy and wins it again. What a terrier he's been in this game. Ball to ground. 
umpire standing close by watching proceedings says give it to me boys and we'll have another throw up so scotch have been the predominant team won their way into the grand final after winning uh, after losing just one game during the home and away season won the second semi-final where they defeated St Pat's and have now got the lead back after St Pat's led for much of the day and got the lead back in this final term with the first goal in this final term still in there battling his heart out is the captain for St Pat's comes back here where Scotch worked the ball inside 50 or oh, clean bowl there was the St Pat's defender kicked out of those puddles those big puddles sitting on the ground ball almost stopped dead now it's worked forward and out over the boundary line for a boundary throw in the clock tells us we're approaching the 17 minute mark of the turn boundary umpire high in the air with the throw not much depth in it however comes down to ground down there still working his heart out is gamble can't get the ball clear. There's been a whistle on play and... A free kick has been... Well, the 50 metre penalty has been paid by the trailing umpire. Now, I don't know if that's on, but anyway. Surely the man on the scene awards the 50 metre penalty, not the man up the ground with his hands in his pockets, but anyway... It's happened, it's done, we've seen it, and now St. Pat's are trying to get this ball into their attacking zone. They just haven't got the manpower left at the moment to do it, I don't think. Old Scotch have got the numbers to the footy every time the footy comes to the ground. Here's a chance for St. Patrick's through the agency there of Robin Hodgetts. His kick skews off the side of his boot, and the mark will be taken there. No, it's not allowed, it didn't travel the required distance, and now they pack up, and the ball will be thrown up on the edge of the centre square eastern side of the ground there's the throw up big men do battle once again hard tackle knocks the ball away Lonigan picks it up cleanly he's been pretty clean with his hands Lonigan, and gets the ball forward and standing in the way down there is Pierce to take the mark for St Pat's rain eased a little at the moment still coming down however and squeezing the ball out of there and finding O'Neill, but a good player for St. Pat's for most of the game, but the kick wasn't accurate, and it's just found the defence of Scotch. Kicks into the man in the mark, did he or not? No, he didn't, and found this man again with number 44 on his back. He's had a poultice of kicks in this second half. Probably been the generator of actually getting the game moving for, the, for Scotch. Now St. Pat's go forward again, off hands. Not a good day for overhead marking. And picking it up quickly and trying to get out of the pack there is... Is, 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 who was it? It was number 49. We don't have a number 49. Kicking it off the ground, quickly going into attack once again, Scotch. And I think he'd been bundled over after he kicked the ball and a free kick down the ground. Is it? No. Not too sure what's happening here. I think it is actually going down the ground. It is. And the Scotch player was felled after he disposed of the ball. And the umpires, just like the players, are getting a bit tired, I think. And lining up for the shot at goal for his team down there will be Callum Woolley, the captain of the old Scotch side. So with 20 minutes gone, this will most definitely put the result beyond doubt. Just 15 metres out of goal, the man on the mark. And, oh dear, scrubby old kick. That was a dreadful kick. Even in these conditions, I think he's kicked the ground by the way he's hopping and skipping around there. And the result was one behind, but that will be enough. 6-9-45 leads 5-4-34. So, 12-point break to the Thistles. And there's that man again as his kick smothered that time. Out over the boundary line and a boundary throw in. Not much time left in this game now. And 
Over the back of the pack comes the ball. Good tackle by House. Takes his opponent to the ground. And the umpire says, give it to me. And he'll throw it up for a restart. Knocking the ball to ground there was Ben Slade for some pats. And there's the siren. And the Scotch boys have some celebrating to do. They are premiers in the reserves of Division 2. And the final score, Old Scotch, a 6-9-45, defeating St. Pats, 5-4-34. And the players exchange their congratulations. Quite happy. The Alex Robinson there, the number two jumper for Old Scotch, played a sterling game across the back line. And the St. Pats boys after leading for much of the game, had the lead arrested away from them with that first kick in the final term when Scotch finally hit the front. And they've run out premiers after leading the competition for all of the season. That scoreline for you again, Old Scotch, 6-9-45, defeating St Pat's, 5-4-34 in the reserves grand final of NTFA Division 2. So there's some Bats boys congregating over here, waiting for the presentation which will take place down here in front of us to Old Scotch for their Premiership medallions. And we can see newly elected Member of Parliament down there, Jeff Lyons, in front of the uh, presentation area. That's Jeff underneath the uh, umbrella there with the black and white and blue top on. He's just handed the umbrella over. So he's already a politician. He's delegating the duties. And we await the official presentation.